where we meet him now. I, have, I am a columnist for the Virginia Gazette. I walk three miles a day. <laughs> I give lectures here at the college on the Holocaust and the Second World War. It will be 94. For 40 years, I didn't talk about uh, the Holocaust. Uh, past didn't interest me. I was interested in, in today and the future. But after those Holocaust deniers came out, suddenly I realized that it is my duty to bear witness. I was born in Czechoslovakia in a small town on the Danube River. In 1938, uh, the Munich agreement between Hitler and Chamberlain uh, dismembered Czechoslovakia and my hometown was was incorporated into Hungary. 1944 when Eichmann descended on Hungary and started to deport Jews. I was at that time 18 years old when uh, I was taken into this slave labor camp. It, uh, the Carpathian Mountains, a beautiful place, but not if you have be, been a slave laborer building a railroad uh, truck for the German army on starvation diet. Whenever the bombers came and we were working on the railroad line, the guards chased us into the cornfield, uh, not because they wanted to save us, but save themselves. And so we had to lay on the ground till the bombers left. And during one of those raids, I escaped. I had the civilian clothes and spoke Hungarian and managed to get into the inner city of Budapest. Uh, I was looking for shelter, didn't have food. And by absolute miracle, I ran into the arms of my brother-in-law and he took me to safe houses by Ralph Wallenberg, the Swedish diplomat who saved uh, thousands and thousands of Jews. I was issued false IDs and uh, got joined the underground and my job was again to help other Jews to save themselves. I was delivering false papers. We had an underground, even printing press. What we did, issued papers from the territories that were already occupied by the Russians. So the Hungarian official couldn't check it. Many, many people survived just because of those papers. I needed a job and I walked in one day to the district leader of the Hungarian fascist party and I said I am a good party member but I had to escape from the Russians and now I need a job and he gave me a job in a, a, a factory what was manufacturing uh, timers for aerial bombs for the German Luftwaffe. And I became their a quality controller. Every piece of this timer before they left the factory, I had to look at it and I made sure that it won't work because I sabotaged it. I was an assistant during the, in the underground to uh, Dr. Rajel Kastner, who was the head of the rescue committee in Hungary. What Kastner, he took bribe really the Germans to not to send any more Jews to Auschwitz. So I went with him into the headquarter of German Nazis and uh, helped to deliver a million dollar worth of gold and jewelry in a suitcase. Now, my uh, role was carry the suitcase, be a so-called schlepper. Were you scared? <laughs> no, 
<laughs> if you would have scared, it will, would have shown, and it maybe would have been your end. No, you had to have self-confidence. Originally, there were 3,000 Hungarian Jews from Budapest who were supposed to be sent to Auschwitz, but instead they were sent to Switzerland. Only 1,800 something who finally arrived to Switzerland because of this bribe to the Germans. I was maybe 13 years old with my mother. My mother uh, died of starvation in a concentration camp. Here is my sister who died after arriving to Auschwitz with her little baby and she was right away gassed by Dr. Mengele. And this is my brother who survived the war but came back as a skeleton. My father and my brother came back. Otherwise, uh, my uh, sister, my mother, uh, uh, uncles, uh, cousins, about two dozen close relatives perished during the Holocaust. I married, uh, after the war, uh, a Czech girl uh, who was in my Catholic family. And I, I t first I had to try out that she is not an anti-Semite, because it is the last thing that I needed after surviving the Holocaust, but she wasn't. And our marriage lasted, <laughs> it still lasts, for 70 years. soon uh, found out how oppressive this regime is and had uh, people who were arrested and tortured and, and uh, it was maybe in my life I became again part of the underground and I started to help people to escape from uh, Czechoslovakia. Because of my status as a foreign correspondent, I could travel easily, and so I prepared for them escape routes, but uh, to escaping it can uh, get you into prison for life. So it, it was uh, dangerous for them, dangerous for me. It went through also when the Stalinist purges were. So many people whom I have known were executed, hanged, you know. So everything uh, was telling us, get out of here. We had to take the International Express and went through three different communist frontiers before we reached uh, Sweden with false uh, French passport. Because we didn't speak French, uh, we saw we, that we speak only Yiddish, <laughs> and nobody else spoke Yiddish. So it is how we managed to get through those frontiers. After I went through all those things and came to America and became here uh, a columnist and meet all those people, Margaret Thatcher and Kissinger and it can only happen to you in America. <laughs> it is what Harry Golden, you know, the Saturn writer, wrote, that only in America can happen to you that you came from nowhere and you make it. If you don't learn from history, you, are, uh, you will repeat it. So I am trying to infuse them with uh, desire to learn about history and take it seriously. Life is full of hope. You should never give up. Frank's stories can be found in Alan Zullo's Heroes of the Holocaust and in his own book, Reports from a Distant Place. His full interview can be watched at vpm.org slash Virginia Currents. Just click on Currents Uncut.